this video, we're going to look at a particular algorithm and determine its time complexity. In other words, we're going to find a function that measures the running time for this particular algorithm. The problem we're going to look at is the problem of deciding this language. We have a number of zeros followed by a number of ones, and the number of zeros should be equal to the number of ones. So we have to come up with an algorithm that will look at its tape and determine whether the symbols on its tape are in this language. And it's got to do that by somehow counting the number of zeros and then comparing it to the number of ones. So here is our algorithm. What I'm showing is I'm showing the algorithm in black and I'm going to talk about that first and then I'm going to come back and talk about what's in the bubbles. So let's focus on the algorithm itself first so you can understand the algorithm and then we'll come back and do the analysis of the algorithm's running time. So the first thing we do, the Turing machine has on its input tape a string of zeros and ones so it scans this string from the left end all the way to the right end to make sure that it's a bunch of zeros followed by a bunch of ones. In other words, it makes sure that the order is correct. We don't have zeros coming after ones or ones coming before zeros. And the next thing we do is we go back to the beginning of the tape and scan the tape in a loop. Okay, here's the loop and each iteration of the loop will scan across the tape and each time it scans across the tape, it will change the first zero encounters into an X, and it will change the first one it encounters into an X, and then it will return to the left end of the tape. And so this operation of scanning and changing one zero and one one to X's will um, be done until um, there is uh, nothing more on the tape. So we, re we repeat this while the tape contains at least one zero and at least one one. When it becomes all X's, then we're done. And once we've crossed off all the zeros and crossed off all the ones, or at least while uh, after we've crossed off at least all of the zeros or at least all of the ones, um, then we check to see whether we have all X's. Okay, if there, the, if there is an equal number of zeros and an equal number of ones, and of course, at the time this loop terminates, we should have crossed off the last zero and the last one at the same time, and the tape then should contain all x's. If the number of zeros and the number of ones was not equal, then we will uh, terminate this loop after we've crossed off, for example, all the zeros, but there's still some ones left. So the last step is to scan the tape and make sure that it contains all that X's. And if that's the case, then we accept and otherwise we reject. Okay, now let's look at the running time of this algorithm. Well, remember, we're counting transitions in the Turing machine. The first step is to scan the input to make sure it's in the proper form. And the input size is N, and so uh, it takes N steps to run a scan from the left end of the tape all the way to the first blank. And then we also need to reposition to the left end of the tape again in preparation for the loop. So we require another n steps. So this step takes two times n steps. But we can just summarize that and say it's order n. Okay, we don't care about the coefficient. We only care about the primary uh, part of the term. Now this loop here, we have to we have to analyze both the inside of the loop and then we have to analyze the number of times the loop runs or the number of times the inside of the loop is executed. So here we're scanning across the tape from the left end and we're uh, changing the first zero we encounter to an X and we keep scanning and when we encounter a one we change that to an X and then we return to the beginning of the tape. Now I said here that that takes two N steps. Well if we scan all the way to the blanks and then return, then it would take a full two n steps every time. However, our algorithm will probably begin returning after it crosses after it finds the first one, so it may take a little bit less than this. But nonetheless, this step requires order n time to execute. Now we have to ask uh, how uh, many times the 
body of the loop is executed? And the answer is that uh, it's, uh, each time we're crossing off two characters and we have n characters to start with. So we'll repeat this loop n over two times. So the amount of times, the amount of time that this loop as a whole takes to execute is the number of the rep repetitions times the running time of the body of the loop. The running time of the body of the loop is order n, and when we're multiplying it by n, we ignore the constant factor of one half, and we see that this loop takes order n squared time. The last step of the, the operation, the last step of the algorithm, is to verify that we've crossed off all the zeros and all the ones. And so we have to make one more pass across the uh, tape, which in, ha we have to go all the way to the end to make sure that there are no ones. So um, this is going to take n steps. And so this is an order n operation. So when we combine these, we have order n, then order n squared, and then order n. So when we add these together, the n squared term dominates, so this algorithm runs in order n squared time. So we can say the complexity of this algorithm is n squared. So here's our language again. And by giving that algorithm, we have just shown that this problem is a member of the set of n squared time problems. Okay, so we've proven that um, it's in this class of problems because we provided an algorithm that runs in order n squared time. But it turns out there's another algorithm. There's a better algorithm, better in the sense that it's faster, um, to solve the same problem. So let's take a look at this algorithm and analyze it. We'll talk about the algorithm first, and then we'll come back and look at the information about the runtime of this algorithm. So the first thing we do is we scan the input to make sure it is in the form of a bunch of zeros followed by a bunch of ones, that we don't have anything out of order. Then we have a repeat loop. While the tape contains at least zero, one zero and at least one one, and then this is what's different about the, the algorithm. Um, the body of the loop is different than the previous algorithm. We scan the tape to see if the number of zeros plus the number of ones is odd or even. And uh, so we, we just look to see whether we have an odd number or an even number of zeros and ones. We're supposed to have an equal number of zeros and an equal number of ones. So if this string is a member of this set, it should have um, length n, which should be 2k. In other words, the length of the string should be an even number. Okay? If there is one extra 1 or there's one extra 0, then this would be odd. And so if it is odd, we reject right there. We better have the same number of zeros as we have 1s, so it better be even. Then we scan across the entire tape, and what we do is we cross off every other zero. So we cross off half of our zeros, starting with the first zero, and then we cross off every other one. So we cross off half of our ones, starting with the first one. And we, by cross off, I mean we change them into x's. So then when we go back here and scan the tape to see whether the number of zeros and ones is odd or even, we ignore the x's. And finally, um, we scan the entire tape and we look to make sure that no zeros and no ones remain. And if so, we accept and otherwise we reject. Okay, so now let's analyze the time complexity of this algorithm. And we begin with the first step and this is the same as the previous algorithm. It runs in linear time. Basically it scans the all the input characters and then it returns to the left end. Let's order in time. The second uh, thing we need to look at is this step that scans the tape to see if the number of zeros plus the number of ones is odd or even. And we've seen in earlier videos about finite state machines that we can do this in a, with a fairly straightforward uh, deterministic finite state automaton. 
So I think you can see that this would be done in uh, order in time. And then if we end up in a state that indicates that the number was odd, we want to reject immediately. So here I'm using order one. This indicates constant time. This step, the time required to do this step does not depend on the size of the input at all. Okay. It might actually be zero time because it's just a matter of what state we end up in. But um, in any case, it's constant time. Doesn't doesn't change regardless. Of, uh, if the with bigger input, it doesn't change. And lastly, we we scan across the entire tape, crossing off every other zero and every other one, and that's one full scan of the tape plus a return uh, to the beginning of the tape. So that's order in as well. So this is a linear time. So the entire body of the loop is linear time. Now we get to the question of how many times is the body of the loop executed? How many times does the loop iterate? And in order to answer that question, I want to um, look at uh, an attempt to animate how this algorithm works. So here we're starting with a, a sample input of a bunch of zeros and a bunch of ones, same number of ones. It looks like there are fewer ones, but that's because my zeros are fatter. And in the first step, we cross off every other zero, starting with the first one. We change it to an X, and I've drawn the X's in red here. Okay, so we're changing every other zero to an X, and then starting with the first one, we're changing every other one into an X. Okay, then on the next pass, I, I'm not going to copy the X's down here. I'll leave those blank because I'm only concerned with the new X's here. Uh, so we cross off every other zero. Okay, so we cross, starting with the first zero, we cross this one off, change it into an X, leave this one alone, and we cross off this zero, turn it into an X, leave this one alone, and so on. And then uh, start, the first one is changed to an X, the second one is left alone, and then the, the third X is changed to, the, the third one is changed to an X, and so on. Okay, in the next pass, we have a bunch of X's in these positions that are indicated with a line. And now again, we cross off the first zero, and we leave the second zero, and we cross off the third zero, and then we're done with that, the zeros, and we do the same thing with the ones. Uh, kind of ignore that little line there. Um, and then finally, uh, in the last pass, we just have one zero, we cross off every other zero, starting with the first one, so we finally change that one into a, an X. And then when we do the ones, we cross off every other one, starting with the first one, which is this one right here, and there's only that one, so we change it into an X. And at this point, everything's been changed into an X. So, cross off every other zero, cross off every other one, repeat until nothing remains, and at each stage, of course, we should have the same number of zeros as we have ones. Now, we have to analyze the running time of this thing. And I want to look at how many times we're changing things into an X, and those, that's shown in red here. So here we have one X, here we have two X's, in this line we have four X's, in this line we have uh, eight X's, uh, assuming we had enough zeros, and then it would be 16 and so on. So the number of X's is growing by a factor of two. Um, by, so the number, but going, in the reverse direction from the number of zeros to figure out how many steps it will take, reducing every other one, we're going backwards. So that's the log function. So that's why we have the number of steps is a log function as the number of zeros. Okay? So in order to cross off eight, three, four, in order to cross off um, 16 zeros, we first cross off half of them, and then half again, then half again, and then we're left with one, and we cross off the last one. So it takes four steps, okay, because two to the fourth is 16. And so that's where the log is coming from. That's where the log base two is coming from. So going back to our algorithm, the number of repetitions is one plus the log of the number n, okay? So essentially it's log of n. And that's the number of repetitions we have. So each iteration of the body 
takes order in time and we have log in of those. So combining those, we see that the number of steps in executing the entire loop is order in log n. And finally, we have the last step where we scan for zeros and scan, scan for ones and make sure that nothing remains and do our accept or reject. And that is just an order in operation. So what we've done is we have found an algorithm that runs in order in log n. So now we've shown that this problem is a member of a more restrictive class. In fact, it's a member of the time complexity class in log n. So the running time, there is an algorithm that will, that will solve this problem in order in log n time. Before we had an algorithm that solved it in order in squared time and we showed therefore that the problem was in that complexity class. But now we found a better algorithm allowing us to show that it is in uh, a, a tighter, more restrictive complexity class. And so uh, now we know that this problem is an n log n problem that can be executed, that can be solved in order n log n time.